I am Mark Lotus, and my company is Chrome City Records, and we are out of Newmarket, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., and I'm a music producer. I write, produce songs, and film music videos, and I DJ. Wow, that is impressive. That is a lot of stuff there. It's a lot. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about your history with your career? Like, how did you get started? How did this all come to be? Well, when I was young, I started in music and I grabbed a keyboard. I had a little Casio, like all the other kids, and learned how to play the piano. And I taught myself because my mom said I was too stubborn for her to teach me. She was, she was a real good pianist and um, uh, she couldn't teach me. So I just taught myself and played clarinet all the way through. And then at some point, I decided that, you know, I wanted to get together with some of my friends in the neighborhood and start a band. And, you know, as kids, we played around the neighborhood, sold tapes and stuff like that. But then I realized these are like lifelong friends. They're not going anywhere. Like, we're going to just keep going. And we did all the way through high school and into college. And we had a band called Random Dog. And we traveled. We played at CBGB's. We traveled Whoa. up and down and... It was, it was a great time. And so, you know, once that got into my soul, I knew that, you know, music was just where I was going to be. And so I just kept on going. And I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to the story, but that's, that's how I got to at some point starting the record label and gotcha. becoming a music producer. That is amazing. And what was the band that you performed at CBGB's? Like, I know that club is in New York and it's yeah. closed down. It's very uh, iconic and historical. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about what type of band you had and what you guys, like what kind of music you guys were making? Well, we, we were making pop, funk, pop music. We had female artists, female singer. Her name was Kimberly and she was a great, front person and we just played really good danceable music at Random Dog and then we decided that you know this is good I mean we won every battle of bands we could find well you know even in Nova all around the area you know we would play places like the Bayou in Georgetown and and uh, so it was it was really good and then uh, we started to travel out we started going to like the Spiral Club in New York City you know, get a tour bus. We're like, hey, everybody, you want to get on a tour bus? It's like, yeah, you know, it'd be great. So we have a pile on the tour bus and we bring our own crowd with us. That's you awesome. You know, to CBGB's or, or Spiral Club. And, and so that's how we got to performing there. And, um, you know, it was, always, it was always a fun time. A lot of energy. It was something that I knew that just wasn't going to go away for me. I can see that. Yeah. Now, can you tell me the record label that you have right now? What all do you do and what kind of artists do you currently have right now? Okay. Um, the, the record label itself started kind of like as a, as a pop label. And, and for the most part, I would still consider it mostly pop music. Um, but it, it, it carries um, all sorts of different avenues of music, all different genres. I've written four ballets. Wow. People don't look, they look, you wrote a ballet? Yeah, I wrote yes. a ballet. Four of them. So, you know, I've written ballet music. I write music for people, comedians, or, you know, I write their jingles, their opening piece, their song, um, you know, venturing out into movie and TV. But the the label has grown from, from pop music. And I just finished my first country song. Wow. I'm proud of that. That, that was a struggle, but I got one Congratulations. out. I'm going to release it this year. Um, and, you know, the artists that we have on the label are, they're local, except for one, you know, um, and she was, was probably my, my first artist that I signed. Her name was Ariel Current. She currently lives in Florida, but, but all of the artists are in this area. Oh. You know, I came from this area. So for me, it was important to have a label that represented us right here. You know, there is just a wealth of talent right here in the, in the D.C. metro area. And so for me, I started um, scouting, doing my own A&R, you, know, um, you know, having auditions. But my auditions were in D.C. at, at, at Seven Drum Studio. Because why? Because that's where we started. That's where we are. 
And so it was important to me to really just sort of capture our local talent. And even the, the most recent artist that I just signed, I mean, she's in Baltimore. So it's like we're, we're all right here. In the area. Yep. Yeah. And we keep it right here. And, and, and so, you know, it's pop music, all indie, um, some EDM, you know, all, all of those. Because I don't want to have the same artist. I don't want all my artists doing the same thing. That's right. Because then they're competing with each other. And we don't need to. We can just, we, we can do our own thing and get our messages out there. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I think that's great because... Usually the places where all of this are is New York or L.A. Mm -hmm. or Nashville, maybe sometimes Chicago. So it is. I think it is important for there to be like a little hub or community based here yeah. in the DMV area. So I think that's, that's awesome, and I'm glad that you have decided to pursue that in the area Thank to you. help the local artist. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it means a lot to me, and I tell that to every single one of them. I said, no, we're, we're in this together. This is about us, you know. I grew up in Montgomery County, and so you know, I meet other people. I went to University of Maryland, and and so I'm, yeah. I'm working with. If it's an actress, that you know, I I was in a meeting this morning. Actress, University of Maryland. She graduated from Maryland. She's a turf like me, so I'm interested in working with her, and I'm interested in working with other actresses around the area have have joined in on the label to do some of my music videos because I work with artists outside of the label. Yeah. And when I do that, sometimes they're in Europe or other countries and they can't do the music video. So I do theatrical videos and I do them with the local artists, the awesome. local actors yes. and actresses. That is awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about your record label. Do you have any future upcoming plans for it? What, where do you see you guys in the next five years? The label's growing. And I started the label uh, 10 years ago. Oh, wow. I started it 10 years ago. And I learned a lot of growing pains in that 10 years. So when I look at the next five years for the label, I look at the development of the artists that I have to the point where we're invited everywhere to be a part of all sorts of things, shows. Cherry Blossom is a big festival in DC that we, yes. where we, you know, I've had artists perform there. I've had other artists on my label that have performed there. But this group of artists I have right now, I want them to be able to perform there. I want this group to, to take that gauntlet and go further and make this label something where when people talk about Washington DC, they include Chrome City Records in there. They go, okay, well, Chrome City Records is a big label in that area. Yeah. And so that's that's my immediate goal. Um, that and you know, this the label itself has has uh, different uh, avenues that it's reaching out because the filming has kind of gotten really good for me. Mm -hmm. And so with that, it offers new new areas for the label because I write music for film. Yeah. So. You know, it, it, it's just it's just going to keep growing into something that we can all be proud of. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's exciting for our area. So, yeah, I, I hope that all of all of your um, endeavors and your artists and everything are able to break through and we can have something to be proud of in our music industry in the area. So that's what we're working towards. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Um, and now tell me a little bit about this award that you received. I want to know the story and how that came to be and what it's called. So <laughs> I have always concentrated on producing music. But at some point, I realized that in order to really penetrate out into the public, I needed videos. I needed impactful videos. And so I started um, filming. At first, all I did was film GoPro stuff, okay. just for myself. <clears throat> and then I started um, filming different things with GoPro and working with different software. And, and all of a sudden I realized, I'm like, you know, I think at this point it's been years of me GoProing I mean, there's lots of bruises, 
when you decide to be a GoPro filmer, yes. you know, because the camera can do anything. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off this thing and roll into the bushes with the GoPro. You know, throw this stick at me and it'll look really <laughs> great on film and slow-mo. And so I started filming my artists, doing yeah. different clips and things and, and then learning how to edit the right way. Uh, the next thing you know, I was, I was filming videos, um, GoPro style videos okay. and going out in the public, just filming wherever we wanted and people really loved it, you know, cause some of my artists are very, they have a lot of the image. So when they go out and they go out in the public, you know, they look, they look rather larger than life, great outfits. You know, I mean, one of my artists is really, she's really tall and, and so when she goes out, people are like, who's that? <laughs> so you're filming that, you're filming, I'm filming in Georgetown on the street, you know, wherever I can, because that's how you make your mark. Yeah. So the filming just kept growing and growing. And then um, I had a, a song that I wrote with my daughter. Um, my daughter is out in Nevada and she goes by Peachy Maddie and she's a, by her own right, a huge influencer. She's got hundreds of thousands of followers. I'm curious and I'm going to look her up you after. <laughs> go look at her up because even I go and she's just got a lot of followers and she was like, dad, I want to write this song with you. Aww. And so we went into, we went into the basement studio and, and we started working on this song. Well, when we got done with the song, you know, it was, you know, the vocals, I was on the track. I still, I still reactivate myself and put myself in my own song. So here we are, we, we've got this track. Um, you know, she was, on, she was on the track and I said, okay, you know what I'll just do? I'll do a video, I'll do this really uh, edgy video. Um, I will find two really good actresses and I'm going to put, I'm going to ask them to change it to 14 different outfits. Wow. <laughs> and my wife, Kimberly, and she's really great hair, makeup, wardrobe. So I was like, okay, we'll work on this together. And we're going to put this in and we'll film it where I wrote the song, where I wrote the music at Seven Drum City in DC. And so, uh, you know, talk to the owner. He's like, yeah, you know, go ahead and use that one. It's a really unique room in there. And uh, we sketched it out. We found two local actresses. We had Kitty Wu and we had Joanna Lefevre. And she was, you know, those are the two actresses I was using. So, so we film it on two separate days, mm -hmm. on two separate months. <laughs> and I sat there forever editing it and working on it. All the outfits went through. Good. <laughs> and when we got done, I released it. And people instantly really loved it. They Yay. thought it was very entertaining. And so I said, you know, this, this video is worth submitting to film festivals. So wow. I started submitting them to film festivals. And the second one I sent it to, they got back to me. It was called the Future of Film Awards. They were like, you won Best Director. I was just shocked. I was in complete shock. I, 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 I thought it was entertaining and good. And, but to see that someone else saw the, the 14 outfits. The hard work you put in there, everybody put in there. Everyone put so much into it. I mean, we're in this room, you know, the actresses, they're doing the drums. They're, they're doing the mix board. They're, do, they're doing all the acting they can. Yeah. They're throwing money all over. I'm GoPro filming in this little room. And I'm also using a Nikon as well. And it came through. And we won. And all of a sudden, again, people started. All of a sudden, then, then everyone's contacting me. Numbers are going up. Wow. And they're like, who are these people? I said, well, everyone's local. Everyone's from here. Everyone in the video is right here. So I then could push that narrative, you know, and on to the next project. And so, you know, I then am now on to, I, well, I just finished filming my next one. Yeah. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Is the next one also going to be, like, for a music video, a song? Yeah, it's called Mistakes. Funny is that, is that it was a song we wrote 
when I was in Random Dog. It was a song okay. I performed here in D.C. for years. We performed that song when we opened for the Whalers. So the Whalers were performing in Virginia. They asked us to open for them, which was amazing. That's awesome. I mean, obviously, if Bob Marley were alive, it would have been even more amazing. But yeah. still, they were original members in the group. We opened for them, and we got to play the song. So anyway, I remade the song again, you know, um, and I got local actresses. Um, I got um, Kimberly Starks, who's on ID Channel. You know, she does a lot of work. She does, like, commercials and stuff. Um, and Becky Sullen, who works, um, she, uh, Scullin, she works down here in Alexandria. She's doing a lot of work down here. Okay. Actress, model, and um, another guy, John Comer. So we, we used all of those local, all local guys, all local people, and um, we filmed it. And I was filming in Frederick, so I wanted to highlight what is Frederick. Yeah. So we, we you know, I make sure I highlight the different things at the, at Baker Park. And because I want not only does it look cool, but I want those who don't live in this area to see get a how, sense. yeah, get a sense of what's going on here. And so, you know, it's a theatrical video and it's taken a long time to edit and I'm really excited I'm sure. to release it soon. It's part of a three, it's actually part of a three part video. Holy moly. So, yeah. Wow. You really do put your heart and soul to everything and your thought like, no, it has to be here. Talent has to be here. That's awesome. No, that's that's really cool. Represent. Yeah, thank you. I mean, people from New York are like, hey, I'll, you know, they'll they'll apply for it, and they're great, but we've 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 got such yes. a wealth here. Yes. No, I absolutely agree with that. And tell me a little bit about um, your studio. Like, what is it like when people come in there? What's the atmosphere? How are your artists connected? in that space so the studio and this has been a long-standing approach for me so when I first started the label I said to myself we can do this virtually there's no reason why we can't make great songs regardless of where you are so at first it had no studio um, I was like everybody else and I still use just pretty much just one studio Blue Room Productions in, Beth in Bethesda that's right <laughs> Montgomery County and um, you know uh, Conrad Aussie Poets he runs that studio he he used to do all my music he used to mix all my music I all my artists would go there to record but, but over time, I, I built my own studio. I have my own studio in my basement. And I'm able to record everything there and mix all my own music, record guitars and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I do that and then I bring artists in to uh, record the vocals. We go to Blue Room Productions to awesome. do the vocals. Okay. And so uh, when we go in there, there's a great atmosphere, great you know, engineer. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're always excited to promote him and talk about, you know, the stuff he's done. He's just a, he's just a great engineer, he, and, you know, and producer of his own right. So that's where we record. Um, and for the artists that are not in the DC area, yeah. the one, which is, which is Ariel Current. Florida. She's got a wonderful, she's an amazing artist, amazing voice. She, she can record down there. I make friends. I make friends wherever she moves. I make friends with the studio that she feels comfortable with. Okay. And she'll record out of there. They'll send the tracks up to Blue Room Productions. <laughs> you know, yep, and then we'll, we'll right. mix and master it here. So it's a virtual thing. Uh, and it seems to really work with everybody. Awesome. And now my final question here is, do you have anything else that you would like for our listeners to know that maybe I didn't touch on or anything? Hmm. Any well, message in your heart even? Well, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've put this passion out here um, and I'm going to keep it going. You know, I, I DJ as well and I DJ a lot. Like I try my best and I'll bring my artists to the event 
they'll sing live. I'll mix their songs in. Um, and so, you know, if someone sees me out and about, they'll see me DJing festivals. I DJ the Jingle Run at the Baltimore Harbor. Oh. Um, you know, UMBC. Um, I've been on the mall and I've been in the, at the wharf. I mean, I'm, I'm DJing large scale events. Usually those are like charity events mm -hmm. for great causes, you know, arthritis foundation, uh, Crohn's and colitis. I did all, I do all those light the night and, you know, lymphoma, leukemia. I try to donate. Um, I don't, I don't get emotional because my mom died, but, so but like, it was one of those things that drove me you know, and she was a really great musician. And so it just, it just kind of keeps it going yeah, for me. Yeah. So, you know, I guess I'd want people to know that, you know, I do a lot of charity work um, and I bring those artists with me because they also have loved ones that they want to support as well. So if you see me out there, you know, come say hi, Mark Lotus, I'm always available. So, you know, and uh, look out for the great music coming ahead. Thank you so much, Mark, for being here today and taking time out of your day to share your story and wisdom. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Lil. Appreciate it. Absolutely.